Hi everyone. Figured I'd take a break from working on the six LEDs to throw all the tools that I use to rebuild this transmission, you know, all the specialty tools on the bench at one time and kind of go through them. So if you're interested in maybe getting into these transmissions, you want to start working on them, you have an idea of what's ahead of you from a tooling perspective. All right, I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm just going to get right into it. Um, we have a mix of Kent Moore dealership tools and aftermarket equivalents on the bench. So uh, any tool that has the, um, the tool catalog ID number uh, written on it is aftermarket. And I'll start with these giant snap ring pliers here. Um, these are used to remove the center support snap ring uh, on the 6L80E, 6L90, or really, I guess, any 6L transmission. Um, these are absolutely mandatory. I would not recommend at all that you try to improvise your way around either purchasing or acquiring them. Um, this is the snap ring in question. Okay, this thing is gigantic. Um, put it next to a 4L80E center support snap ring, which is kind of beefy in its own right, but it is downright puny compared to the one in the 6L series. So you absolutely need uh, these things to safely use that snap ring. Um, you know, if you try and you know, use a, I don't know, a pry bar or hammer or chisel or whatever, I mean, you do run the risk of either damaging the case or more importantly, uh, injuring yourself if the thing flies out of you. Um, next to all cover is going to be this uh, combination uh, collet style um, slide hammer deal. It's a Kenmore DT48550 and it's used to remove the two roll pins that hold the um, parking rod actuator housing uh, in the case and the selector shaft in the case respectively. So um, the big, uh, actually I'll gather all three roll pins. So uh, the big roll pin here is going to be for that uh, parking rod actuator housing. Uh, the middle roll pin is actually for the um, parking rod to rooster comb assembly. Uh, this you just remove with a you know roll pin punch and a hammer. And then uh, this little one here is going to be the uh, selector shaft roll pin. And that's uh, both the selector shaft roll pin and the actuator housing roll pin are in the case recessed with only just a little bit uh, exposed. So you're not going to be able to grab it with like pliers or you know diagonal cutters. I mean, trust me, I've tried and I've never been able to do it. So um, that tool is only like 30 bucks and it's usually available on eBay. Uh, the, uh, the pliers are anywhere from like two to 300 bucks. Uh, this set's made by uh, PRTC. They're out of Salt Lake City. And um, you know, we can found them on eBay. These pliers are, are really, really, really stout. So it makes the job of removing that snap ring nice and easy. This next little tool here um, is going to be uh, Kenmore J092 or DT47848. And it's for installing the um, filter pickup seal in the uh, pump cover. Uh, you don't really need it. I mean, any bushing driver will do, or even a socket of the right size. Okay, these four tools here are to service the uh, caged needle bearing assemblies. Uh, there's one in the 3.5R drum and one in the uh, rear planet. So for removal, you can use either Kentmore J23129 with a slide hammer that works, or you can use a hammer and a chisel to, you know, put the chisel right underneath the bearing and then pound up on it. And here I'm referring to the bearing in the rear planet. Uh, the bearing in the 3.5R drum you can just remove with a, a small chisel or a screwdriver. You just again have to be real careful. Alright, this next tool here is um, an aftermarket tool. The uh, Kenmore equivalent is DT47781. And this tool is used to lower the um, uh, 3.5R drum into place. You know, overtop the input shaft slash 456 drum and then spline everything on, you know, meshing all the different uh, sets of lugs and, you know, um, internal uh, splines on the uh, frictions. And you can make do without it. And if you're only going to build maybe one or two of these things, maybe you're, you know, doing it for yourself or helping out a friend or family member. Um, you know, these are about 150 bucks. You may be able to save one. It's just real tedious to do it and time consuming. If you plan on uh, rebuilding these transmissions as part of like a, you know, um, rebuilding service, you definitely want this tool. Here's another must have tool in my opinion. Uh, this is Kentmore DT47867. If you're familiar with my other videos and you watch uh, disassembly or assembly or bushing videos or whatever, um, you've seen this tool. And it can be used in a multitude of, uh, you know, makes and models, transmission families and whatnot. Um, I will say up front, you're not going to be able to successfully rebuild this transmission without something either like this or all the individual 
uh, clutch spring compressors that Kentmore makes for this transmission. Um, most of the uh, snap rings are under simply too much spring tension for vice mounted units or bench mounted units or the other obstacle is that they're you know physically too big. The area, the diameter that you have to compress is too wide you know for for units like that. So uh, something like this will save you a lot of money on all the individual tools that you would otherwise have to purchase. All right. Here we have aftermarket equivalents for the um, turbine shaft ceiling ring uh, expander and sizer. So the expander is a DT47768-1 and the sizer is DT47768-3. And they're just simply for the installation and the sizing of the Teflon ceiling rings that go on the turbine shaft. All right, over here we have a threaded rod. This threaded rod is a M12 by 175. And this is a lifting tool for the uh, rear gear train. So how this works is um, you install the rear planet into the uh, ring gear assembly in the drum slash output shaft. It's just one big assembly. And you gotta lower that into the case. And what you do is you thread this rod or whatever equivalent tool into the inner diameter of the output shaft where there are threads M12175. And then you can safely lower it into the case and then just unthread it, take it out. Um, I'll have to annotate the video with the Kenmore um, uh, J number. I don't know what it is. I forgot to write it down. Um, Adapt the case and a few other companies make an equivalent tool. They're all over a hundred bucks. Um, you can buy one of them if you'd like, or you can spend about 20 bucks in, uh, you know, threaded rod, fender washer, and a few other things like uh, lock nuts and some small washers and make the tool yourself. Okay, um, this bushing driver set is specifically uh, designed to service the 6L80E, all bushings, and all bushings must be replaced in this transmission. Uh, this is available on eBay. I want to say it was about 100 bucks, somewhere in there, maybe 125 um, If I'm way off on these prices, I'll just annotate the video and just go buy what I annotated, not what I'm saying when it comes to price. But uh, this is optional. It's a nice to have, but if you already have a good sized uh, collection of bushing drivers, then they should work as well. All right, um, we got two sockets here. Um, either one of these sockets will work to remove and reinstall the um, six, what I'll call starfish bolts that um, hold the uh, valve body Tecum complex onto the transmission case. So first socket's a snap on 10 EPL. And the second snap uh, socket is also a snap on, it's a um, E12, so inverted Torx. Uh, this is technically an inverted Torx 50 plus um, head and that's what you have to use socket wise to remove and reinstall it. Okay this uh, next tool is going to be an air checking tool for the 3.5R drum. Um, if there is a Kentmore equivalent I'll annotate the video I'm not sure if there is or not but uh, there's a few different variants or variations I should say on this tool that are out there on eBay and Amazon. I like this one more than the others it's got a locking plate, it's got O-rings, and, it, and you know, it just looks nicer, um, and it works very well. So how you use this tool is uh, when um, one of these transmissions comes in for a rebuild, um, before you disassemble the 3.5R drum, stick it in there, air check the um, clutch circuits, and what you're looking for is really two things. One, um, you wanna see if there uh, are any bubbles or any air rushing out of the welds on that 3.5R drum. Units produced from 2006 to 2009 had a serious problem with that. Uh, those welds were, you know, horribly, um, you know, horribly made. So almost invariably, I'd say 90% of 6LEDs have failed um, had that problem. You know, once they uh, were torn apart on the bench and inspected, and that's like nationwide. So uh, GM reinforced the welds, I believe, starting in 2009 or maybe 2010, and the incident rate uh, dropped considerably, but it's still a problem. You always want to reinforce those welds on overhaul. But that checking tool will allow you to test the drum independently of the uh, stator, so that if you're trying to also isolate, um, you know, a cause for leakage, and you want to see if it's maybe, um, you know, ceiling rings here on the pump, you know, on the pump stator, or if uh, it came in because uh, there was some problem with the lip seals in the drum itself, or maybe the piston was cracked, uh, this will allow you to do that before you even take the drum apart. All right, um, the last two tools that I'll cover on the bench are uh, related to the pump. 
So this big round ring is um, an alignment tool to you that uh, is used to align the upper and lower halves. In other words, the uh, pump body and the pump cover. It's J4664, and uh, this tool. I see it uh, go from anywhere between $100 and $300, just depending on you know who's doing the asking and uh, you know what the uh, you know what they want for it, I guess. But uh, you need this or an equivalent. Uh, the aftermarket has a few options as well for you. And I mean, yeah, you technically can get by without it, but you know it's just again you're taking on a lot of risk, and um, that you know that pump has to be perfectly aligned uh, before you. Um, go through the uh, bolt tightening and torquing sequence. Otherwise, you're going to have major problems. So, once you have the bolts all tightened and torqued to spec, you follow the sequence, everything is good. And you've also measured and validated the uh, clearance between uh, the deck surface of the pump body slash bell housing and the top of the slide in the rotor. Then you want to use a checking tool to validate that the rotor will turn freely uh, once it's all you know once everything is assembled, the pump is all put back together. Um, if all of those other prerequisites I just mentioned are met and, you know, when you insert this tool and it won't turn, it's locked, you know, the, the rotor is locked up, then more than likely your um, pump vanes are out of spec. In other words, they're too tall, so you got interference. So you have to take it apart and, you know, put your pump vanes in. But, um, I mean, that's, that's almost always the problem uh, whenever everything else is cared for. Uh, you can use the torque converter to do the same thing if you have it available, and I mean the new torque converter, not the old one. But I generally recommend against that because otherwise you have to put like a, um, a pedestal, you know, you have to have one nearby so that you can put the torque converter on the pedestal and then carefully, and I mean carefully, lower that pump assembly upside down onto that converter. And that just gets real tricky. A checking tool is a lot easier. Okay, the last tool I'll mention is going to be uh, the holding fixture itself. This is aftermarket. The Kenmore equivalent is going to be J8763B or Bravo for the main fixture. And then Kenmore has like an auxiliary piece that bolts to it and the transmission. And that's going to be DT47605. Um, the Kenmore tool is available from time to time on eBay. I've never seen it on Amazon. Uh, it, it's okay. I mean, at least it, it looks okay. I mean, it's not the bee's knees or anything when it comes to fixtures. I actually like this fixture a lot better. Um, it's a one piece deal. It's got, you know, billet aluminum, uh, you know, knobs and otherwise very well made. And it's designed to bolt to any standard engine stand so that you can, um, you know, safely secure the 6L80 or 90 into position. And <clears throat> if you're coming from uh, working on 4L60s, 700R4s, TH350s, 4L80Es, and your fixture is, you know, was designed for them, uh, it's not gonna work on the 6L family transmissions, at least not the 6L80 and 90, because the uh, body of the 6L80 and 90 there on the case is too wide. Uh, it, it just, you know, won't fit. So you do need an additional fixture if that's all you have. And you can fab one up yourself. I mean, if you're handy, if you got, you know, if you're a fabricator, you can make one and it'll work also and I you know from time to time see that uh, when like YouTube other you know other YouTubers building these so anyway um, that's tooling uh, if you have any questions go ahead and leave them below any comments any feedback um, uh, there's a whole boatload of other specialty tools that are you know um, you know you can find a full list in the ATSG manual uh, I only cover the tools that I have and use uh, and I know that that's all I need to rebuild the unit so um, you know, you obviously don't need to buy every single tool in the book. It would be very, very, very expensive. All right, that does it. Thanks again, uh, as always, for your time, and we'll catch you on the next one.